grab a hymn book. We're going to get started with number 231, Sunlight in My Soul Today. Number 231, let's all stand as we get started this morning. Number 231. I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me and with the sunlight of his love bid all my darkness flee. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love within. This is number 231 in our hymn books on that second stanza. Though clouds may gather in the sky and billows round me roll, however dark the world may be, I've sunlight in my soul. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight last stanza number five soon i shall see him as he is the light that came to me behold the brightness of his face throughout eternity sunlight sunlight in my soul today sunlight sunlight all along the way since the savior found me took away my sin I have had the sunlight of his love within. Amen. Excellent singing. Please be seated. Hey, come on up here, boys and girls. Let's do a song together. We're going to sing Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. Wee and little. That's kind of redundant. And All right. Yeah, don't knock the mics over. You can stand right, the, right in the middle there. Yes, there you go. Hi, Isla, how are you? You're like way over here. Hello, ladies, come on. Oh, there's plenty of room. Come on down, Charlie. Yeah, boom, there you go. All right, you scoot over a little bit. Hi, Kaylee, how are you doing? You look lovely in polka dots. All right, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he, all right? And what did he do? You know, he climbed him in a sycamore tree? Okay, why did he do that? Oh, man, that'll preach. All right, here we go. Zach. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Oh, excellent singing. Most excellent. Good job. See you later, boys and girls. Head on downstairs. See y'all later. Wonderful. Off they go. All righty. If uh, teenagers, if you're a teenager, they uh, want to go over your choir number this morning. So if you're a teenager, you have permission to head on downstairs Skipping out of my Sunday school class, I feel horrible. They're the ones that answer all the good questions. <laughs> Off they go. Dave, you ha you're staying here? You're going to answer all my questions? Whatever. Okay. And uh, we are actually going to be done a little bit early today because the adults have, uh, yeah, Christian Joy, just throw a hymn book at me, okay? All right, good. All right, Brother Stephen, throw hymns, hymns, hymn books at me often to remind me of things. And, of course, Brother Andrew is very good at reminding me of things. And you don't even have to throw hymn books. So that's really good, brother. All right. This is a, a different outline from our regular scheduled uh, theme. We're going to be kind of a Christmassy type of theme over the next couple Sundays. And um, it's good to be back. We had a wonderful time. We uh, got into uh, Kansas City. Um, what is that? the airport designation? of Kansas City is something like MCI. And I'm thinking, man, where in the world did they come up with that one at, you know? 
So, I mean, some of, the, some of them you can usually figure out when you look at the letters, but, uh, but Kansas City is weird. Anyway, so we flew into Kansas City, and uh, the Merricks picked us up there. We stayed in the beautiful town of Warrensburg, Missouri, and uh, that is a, uh, uh, we've driven by there, I don't know how many times. Uh, I used to preach up in Knob Noster quite a bit, so we've got to actually stay there. We, we arrived on Saturday, and it was the Dick, Charles Dickens Festival in Warrensburg, and uh, so everybody, uh, I sh there was a lot of folks walking around in the Victorian garb type of thing, and they had, uh, they literally, they had chestnuts roasting on open fires, and um, horse-drawn carriages taking people around town, and so it was very nice, and coffee shops, of course, and, and we, had a, we had a great time. We, we spent several hours there just in Warrensburg, hanging out at, at the uh, festival there. Um, and then, of course, we were uh, preaching. I was uh, preaching at uh, Calvary Baptist Church in Knob Noster, Missouri. That's, uh, their property actually butts right up to the, to the fence there at uh, Whiteman's Air Force Base. So uh, they're, at the, at, they're at the end of the flight line. So when you, you, know when, <laughs> you know when aircraft are taking off, they go right by the, right by the church. So uh, it's it was, oh, it was just wonderful to be back there. It's been, it's been 25 years since I preached there last, and we, uh, um, that was one of the churches that took us on for support when we came out here, of course, to begin this ministry, and I believe they helped us out with the purchase of our facility here uh, back in 98, and uh, of course, Jeff Abels was the pastor there for, I think, about 11 or 12 years, and now Brother, uh, Brother Merrick, Jeff Merrick, he's been there. I think he said he just passed 21 years. It's the longest he's ever been in a ministry, and um, he was a church plant planter at a Berean Baptist church, started to work in El uh, Eldon, Missouri, uh, uh, and w when we first moved out there, he was getting the work started in Eldon, and then he uh, got that work organized, and he went out to Walla Walla, Washington, and got a work started out there. Matter of fact, they're celebrating, what did he say, is it their 20, I think they said they're celebrating their 25th anniversary coming up, so he's going out there this year to preach uh, their anniversary uh, services there in Walla Walla, but uh, he's, been, he's been there at Calvary Baptist Church for quite a long time now, doing a great work, and it's a, a lot of military, a lot of, re uh, there's a lot of folks that get out of the military yeah, there in Whiteman and retire and stay. I said, Matt, they don't do that in Jersey. You know, <laughs> they, they retire and it's like, see ya. Um, but uh, they have a lot of uh, folks that have uh, been there. And as a matter of fact, several families that I met actually were there. Um, PCS somewhere else retired and then moved back to Warrensburg, uh, Knob Noster area, just to be a part of Calvary Baptist Church. They have a great ministry. I met a fella uh, who was actually, he, he was on TY here back in uh what was that, 20, was it 2012? Anyway, do you, well, we were, when we had the fellowship hall all torn up and we were putting the French drain in down there back in, 20, I think it was 2012, he was on TDY here. He says, I was at a church there at Fort, at, outside of McGuire Air Force Base back in 2012 and they had just had a flood and they were doing some renovations. All I remember about the building is they had a playground outside and I said, that was us. He says, yeah, I helped you guys for a couple of days doing some, doing some work. And I said, well, yeah, well, I appreciate that. So I thanked him a bunch. He had, uh, at that time, he had just been saved a year or so and got saved out there at Calvary Baptist Church. And, and uh, he was military police, and he was out here just for a week for training. And um, he stopped by, and, and uh, he says, yeah, I really enjoyed my time out there. So he didn't even know it was us. And, of course, I didn't know anything about him at the time. But uh, so he, when, he, when he heard uh, about the ministry, he said, he said it really sounded familiar. So he started asking me questions and ding, made the connection. So you never know who you're going to run into. But um, church out there in, at Calvary is doing really well. The ministry is doing great. Brother, brother, uh, brother Merrick is uh, doing wonderfully. Uh, that's where Brother Bruce Carr is out of. He was sent out of that ministry. Of course, he's a missionary that we've been supporting for many years there in Australia. And uh, so I was preaching Sunday uh, there and Sunday morning, or excuse me, Sunday night, I get home back to the motel and, um, and I get a text message from, uh, from Brother Carr. He said they, they were up uh, early in the morning watching the services, so he wrote to say hi. Um, his brother is uh, there at the church, uh, Brother Bruce Carr's brother, his name is Eric, looks just like him and uh, has had an opportunity to talk to him. And we had some good fellowship. I had a wonderful time but it is so nice to be back home. 
And what did I do with my tablet? There it is. Man, all right. Up to the low. No, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Um, Knob Noster, Missouri is a dot on the map. They, 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 don't, have a, they don't have a red light in Knob Noster. They're, they have a four-way stop sign, the main intersection. That, that's it. Yeah, and, uh, but they have a wonderful church there, and Calvary Baptist Church is doing very well, uh, and they have a tremendous outreach to the community uh, in and around there. It's a very rural community. Warrensburg is right there, but Warrensburg is, a, is again, is a small little place. There's a college there. Um, you know, Kansas City is an hour and 10 minutes. Sedalia is 45 minutes the other way. Um, but uh, they have a great outreach in that, in that area. So it's a blessing to see what the Lord's doing there in Nob Nostra, Missouri, uh, besides, you know, the military outreach that they have. I want to direct your attention this morning, enough of, enough of our rambling on about our trip, but we had a great time, and it is good to be back. Uh, Matt, we're going to be looking at, these are some prophecies concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and his birth. I just, uh, I just have a few of them here. And uh, some of them, of course, you'd be very familiar with that we're talking about today. Uh, but uh, my goal is kind of talk more about, uh, you know, what the implications are, the, or if I has it down there, the big deal. What's the big deal? Matthew chapter 1, verse number 18. I'm going to read down through, uh, that would be verse number 23, and then we'll get started uh, with the lesson today. Matthew 1, 18 uh, says this, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when... Um, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while, they, uh, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Let's stop right there. Let's pray. Let's get our Sunday school lesson going today. Father, it just, it's a blessing to be back home. Father, I thank you for the uh, safety and the, uh, as we traveled, and, and Lord, it was uh, just wonderful to be spending some time with the folks there uh, at, in Nob Nostra, Missouri, and what a wonderful church and a great group of folks, and I just thank you, Lord, for this uh, a tremendous amount of blessings that we received there uh, from, um, from the Brotherhood um, there in, in Missouri. Now, Father, thank you for this time that we have, and I do ask, Lord, that you would guide and direct in the teaching and the preaching of your word today, that you would bless now as we speak about these wonderful prophecies being fulfilled in the birth of the Lord Jesus, where it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, this is, of course, a tremendous uh, portion of scripture in reference to the birth of Jesus, one that, uh, of course, is very familiar to, to all of us. And I, yeah, I have the verses written down there in Matthew 1.28. Of course, that's a fulfillment, even as it's quoted there in the text that we read from back in Isaiah chapter 14, uh, where Isaiah prophesies, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. I'm just reading from Isaiah 7.14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. That means God with us. And so, so here we have this direct fulfillment. And a matter of fact, the angel uh, makes that, that statement. The connection is made and a prophecy is fulfilled. Of course, the prophecy is the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and um, the, uh, the big deal in reference to that is, uh, uh, stems uh, from a few things. First of all, of course, if you would go back with me uh, all the way back to the book of Genesis chapter 3, and uh, we're just going to take a look at that uh, verses there in reference to uh, the curse, if you, uh, as the Bible talks about the Lord... Um, after he deals with Adam and Eve and speaks to them, and of course the the serpent, and and of course then Eve, and then of course Adam, um, um, we we see the statements made in reference to um, um, 
this uh, commitment um, that the Lord says, unto, I, yeah, I, you know, I just don't underline things and write things down as I should. But um, here we go. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, um, yep, I, yeah, just, it's just gone. I'm sorry. You guys are so patient with me. And uh, Genesis chapter 3, and it says, uh, blah, 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 the Lord said unto him, verse number 13, uh, 14, uh, blah, 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 15, there it is. I'm sorry. I just, I, didn't, I don't write verses down. What can I say? Um, except the ones I want to say, and then the ones I do want to say, I don't write down, and you know how it goes. All right. 3.15 says this, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And that, that verse number 15 is a tremendous verse of scripture. And there's a lot of prophecy uh, being fulfilled at this point in time, of course, in reference to uh, ultimately the crucifixion of Christ and, and of course, the uh, uh, eventually the, um, the putting down of um, of of Satan and his rule upon, that he has on this earth. All that is, is wrapped up in this verse of Scripture. Uh, but the, the key, of course, in re reference to what we're talking about is the statement about, um, the, uh, it says, between thy seed and her seed, the seed of a woman. And that, that's a key part. And that plays all the way through the Scriptures. Um, God speaks to, a to Abram, and he talks about his seed, Paul the Apostle makes a very specific reference to the fact of the, plura, uh, the lack of plurality in the word seed as it's played through the Old Testament. And Paul uh, makes mention of the fact that it says seed and not seeds uh, because his emphasis, as Paul emphasizes it, even though it's this line that goes through all the children of Israel, it is leading up to one particular event, and that's the birth of Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham uh, and the seed of the woman uh, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, but the, um, the, the idea of a seed, of course, coming from a woman, that is where this, the virgin birth, of course, plays in. It's not the seed of a man, it's the seed of a woman. And, and, and the important part of that is, is discovered, if you would, uh, over in the book of Romans. And so if you turn with me to the book of Romans, please, and um, in Romans, um, uh, we'll go to Romans chapter 5. And I actually did write that verse down, so we're good now. Uh, Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> and um, write to verse number 12, if you would, please. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You know, the Bible reminds us that we, we all died in Adam. And uh, although Eve was the first one to uh, eat of the fruit, it was Adam's responsibility to carry out the commandment of God. He was the one who was given the commandment directly by God, so God held him responsible uh, for what had taken place in the garden, the falling into sin. God held him directly responsible for that. And so when we died, we all died in Adam. And there's a, a tremendous amount of doctrine in reference to uh, man's sinfulness that comes from that truth. But here we see that sin is passed by, um, uh, for, by, it says, by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And, and um, I, I, this is actually... Kind of a big deal. It's not that women don't are don't have a sinful nature. That's not what it's saying, uh, because every woman that's born in this world has a mother as well as a father. Every one of us have parents. We have a mother and a father. The sinful nature, the uh, what we receive uh, as as part of being human, is a nature that is separated from God, and and that is passed from generation to generation, and it's passed through the line, uh, through the male. That's why Jesus Christ needed to be born without an earthly father, because without an earthly father, the, the depravity of sin is not passed along, uh, was not passed along to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not born with a sinful or depraved or, um, or, or dead um, nature. Uh, every, every one of us are except for him. 
So the virgin birth was essential. It was, of course, predicted uh, there in Isaiah. It was fulfilled. We read it there in the Gospel of Matthew. And it's something that's played throughout the scriptures uh, in reference to the Lord Jesus Christ and um, that he was of the seed, but the seed of the woman, not the seed of man. And because of that, he is born without sin. And so that, of course, plays the key role in his ability of, of providing a sacrifice uh, for the sins of all mankind because um, any kind of sacrifice that was provided by, by men is, is limited, but the sacrifice provided by Jesus is an unlimited, uh, complete, and eternal sacrifice because he was um, um, uh, of the seed of a woman and not of the seed of the man, that virgin birth was essential for that to take place. And so that's one of the basic prophecies concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a couple other ones mentioned here. And if you go back with me to the Gospel of Matthew, I'm going to grab a bottle of water, if you'll excuse me. And uh, take a sip. <clears throat> We're flying out um, there. Um, you know, usually I try to have a conversation with folks. There was a young man sitting next to me on the way out. He had been uh, doing some work up in Maine and flew down to Philly to fly out to KC. And we, I think we talked a whole three hours going back and uh, going out to KC. And uh, just a real nice young man. And um, his, uh, um, his dad is Muslim. His, his mother was, uh, uh, was um, Irish Catholic. And uh, I said, well, that's, that's really interesting. So we, we, had some, we had some wonderful conversations on the way out. It's always a blessing to be able to talk about your faith with folks. And uh, um, he's, you know, was asking some questions about them, saying he was, you know, the kind of guy that uh, uh, very, he was intrigued uh, to have conversation uh, about, uh, about religious things. It didn't bother him one bit. And so uh, it, was, it, it, it was enjoyable. So... Um, now that I come to find, and he told me the company he worked for, and one of the, one of the men uh, out there at, at there at the church in Namna, his name is Brother Sam Voorhees, and, and Brother, Brother Sam has been there forever. I, re, I remember him when, when I, we used to go out there, uh, you know, 30 years ago, uh, Sam and his wife, uh, Diane, and uh, I was talking to Sam while I was there, and, and I said, where are you working at now? And he tells me, I said, well, it's the same company, the young fellow I was sitting next to on the plane. And uh, he says, yeah, it's uh, one of the largest, um, they, they do medical records for hospitals and doctor's offices and things like that. It's a global company. He says, yeah, we got about 35,000 employees. So <laughs> I said, oh, okay, I don't know if you're going to run across this young man. But uh, it, was, uh, it was just amazing. But uh, uh, always talk to folks on airplanes. It's a captivated audience, okay? Amen. All right. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, if you would, please, uh, verse number 1. Uh, and when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men. Okay, so, and so, uh, uh, again, this is a uh, prophecy in reference to the, uh, where Jesus was born at. The prophecy concerns the place of his birth. Now, of course, uh, you know, the, the wise men come to Herod, figuring he would know, you know, where is he to be born? The king, you know. Uh, and, of course, Herod doesn't have a clue. <coughs> And so uh, uh, when Herod heard these things, he was troubled. That's verse number three. He gathered uh, the, the priests together. Notice in verse number four, the chief priests and scribes. And he demanded of them where Christ should be, full, should be born. And, of course, um, you know, when Herod's, when, Herod's, uh, uh, when, when Herod's troubled, everybody's troubled. If you, if you read any uh, history, uh, Bible history type of stuff, uh, you'll find out that Herod was an extremely wicked and dangerous man. And uh, one of my, of course, favorite um, historians, uh, Flavius Josephus, he writes about the death of Herod. Um, and he, he, yeah, he's pretty graphic about it. He tells you about his death. He, he was, um, uh, it was pretty bad. But uh, when, when he died, uh, when he was on his deathbed, they gathered together all the, um, all the people um, if you would, the elite, the educated, um, they, they gathered them together because Herod said, when I die, I want, he told his soldiers, I want you to kill them all so that all of Israel would mourn on his death. That, that's Herod, okay? And so after Herod, this is Herod the Great. I don't know what he was great about. 
But um, after Herod died, uh, the soldiers did not carry out that task, which was, of course, great. But Herod was the one who ordered the death of all the babies there in Bethlehem, of course. This is, this is Herod. Um, he kicked his own wife to death, one of his wives to death. This is, this is what Herod was like, okay? He was a wicked, depraved man, okay? Um, so when he's troubled, everybody's troubled. Um, so he, he demands where the, where, the Jesus, where, the, where the king would be born at with the Christ. And, of course, the information comes back in verse number 5. They said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written of the prophets, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judah, and out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Of course, that's a direct quote uh, from Micah. Chapter 5 and verse number 2, I have that verse uh, written down there. <clears throat> and if you would, I'm just going gonna, gonna to read that. But thou, Bethlehem and Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler of Israel, who's going forth, uh, goings, plural, forth, have been uh, from old and f- uh, from everlasting. And that's directly from Micah chapter 5, verse number 2. Of course, the prophecy is concerning the birthplace or the location of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what's the big deal with that? Well, first of all, you know, you've got, you got this prophecy, so he's got to be born there. Uh, but uh, Mary and Joseph, of course, go to Bethlehem. So the big question is, now they're from Nazareth, Nazareth, okay, which is not the one in Pennsylvania, by the way, but they're from Nazareth. So why... Why go to Bethlehem, especially when you're, like, this much pregnant, okay? Not a fun ride. Um, you know, we always get that picture of, the, uh, of, you know, Mary and Joseph with the donkey and, and you know, Mary on the donkey going like this. And um, I was, in, um, I was in, the, in, the, uh, in the city of Amman. We were driving to the airport to fly out, and we drove by this group of folks. Let me tell you what I saw. I saw the guys riding the donkeys and the wives walking behind going like this, okay? All right? I don't know if she was pregnant at the time, but it's the guys that rode the donkeys and the women walked, okay? That's what I saw. So I, you know, I don't know how Mary got there. I'm sure Joseph was as kind and generous as he possibly could have been. But why, why go to Bethlehem? Dave, do you know why they went to Bethlehem? Oh, man, I put you on the spot. I know you were sitting there going, man, I wish I was in choir right now. Yeah. (laughs) Why did they go to Bethlehem? Taxes. Taxes. Is that why they went, Dave? He's like, oh, I'm, with, I'm with Mr. Francis, yeah. Good, good move, Dave. Yeah, he's agreeing with you 100%. I can see it on his face. Yeah, that poor kid. Sorry, Dave. All right. Yeah, it was a tax thing. All right, everybody loves paying their taxes. So, so, so why Bethlehem? Why, why did they go to Bethlehem? It was taxes, yes, but the taxes all, all also centered around what? Census. Oh, I love it. We, we do that every 10 years here in the United States of America so we can uh, redistribute, you know, tax distributions and things like that and redraw, redraw all our, um, our uh, lines for, uh, for elections and things like that. What do they call that? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, gerrymandering. Yeah, we get to ger- yeah, we get to gerrymander every 10 years and... Uh, What's that guy's name? Eld- Eldridge, Eldridge Jerry, if you're not familiar with gerrymandering. You can Google it, okay? And so, yeah, it'll be a test next week, homeschoolers. Um, so so the, 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 they, live in the, they live in the empire, uh, Roman Empire. There's a census to get a grip of where folks are at, so you had to kind of go back to your hometown. So I mean, if it was happened nowadays that we had to do that, I'd be heading back to Claymont, Delaware. Actually, I was born in Pennsylvania because that's where the hospital was at, but I you know, grew up in Claymont. Um, so you went back to your hometown. So what's the big deal then <laughs> um, that Mary and Joseph are from Bethlehem? What's the big deal, brother? Lineage of David. Ding, 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 ding. Exactly. That is the big deal. And we, we do find out that both of their genealogies run through David. So what's the big deal about being of the house and, house and lineage of David then? Exactly right. And that is a very big deal. Okay? Uh, this, um, the reality of the fact that Jesus Christ is of that line, I'm going to read, um, uh, let me see here. I got a couple passages I want to read. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here in Luke chapter 2, if you want to just turn over 
um, several pages in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse number 1, says this, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a degree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And taxing was in the uh, was um, first made of Cyrenius, so the governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of Nazareth to Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because... He was of the house and lineage of David. Be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Of course, she rode on the donkey and he walked. Okay, That's a marginal note, I guess. Um, so we got this connection um, with this lineage of David. Um, but I want you to, if you would please, go all the way back with me to the uh, Second Samuel, if you please. Second Samuel chapter 7. Second Samuel chapter seven. And uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at a few things. This is, uh, of course, David. Um, David wants to build the temple. Uh, Nathan, of course, uh, is, you know, originally says, "Go for it." Uh, and then God says to Nathan, yeah, that's not my plan." And so Nathan has to go back and speak to David about. Uh, him holding off building the temple, um, but he makes this promise uh, beginning in verse number 12. Anybody want to read that for me? Beginning in verse number 12. Dina, if you would please, nice and loud. 2 Samuel 7, 12. 2 Samuel 7, 12. And when thy days be fulfilled. Okay, now this is, this is God speaking through Nathan the prophet to David. And he's letting them know, you're eventually going to die when your days are fulfilled. But please go right ahead. And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. Okay. That's not snoozing. That's dying. All right. And I'll interrupt you a couple more times through this. You know I will because it's fun. Yeah. Go ahead. I will set up thy seed before thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Okay. Now, this, uh, again... There's that singular seed. Now, I don't have a problem by saying we're, talking, we're going to talk about Solomon, but in this prophecy, it's a whole lot more than just Solomon. And again, I just want to remind you that Paul the Apostle, when he, when he deals with, I think it's in the book of Galatians, when he deals with that word seed, he's the one, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, who emphasizes that it's singular and not plural. He makes a big deal of that. There, there, I mean, a lot of doctrine hangs on the plurality or lack of plura, plurality of this one particular word. And so when it says seed, um, we're going to see it means a lot more than just his, his next kid. Please go right ahead. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. How long? Really? How long's forever? Forever. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Keep going. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will cheat him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Okay. I, so I, I just want to stop for one second in reference to that verse you're talking about here. Again, He's going to be talking about Solomon, the building of the temple, and he's going to extend it even more. Um, I was, um, I'm just, matter of fact, I have my final exam this week. I'm just finishing up a class. And um, I, um, some, some of you guys that are here got bored with me talking about this paper I was writing. Brother Carlos and Brother Stephen, they get sick and tired of me talking about some of this stuff, I think. But um, I just finished writing a paper on what's called replacement theology. And that means that there are groups out there that consider themselves to be the children of Israel, and they replaced the nation of Israel. Uh, covenant theologians, that's a lot of the, you know, the, the covenant Presbyterians and those type of organizations. Um, uh, there, there are many that hold that the church has replaced Israel. That is, that is not where we're at theologically. There are groups out there like the lost tribes of Israel type of folks, okay, um, that, you know, Israel uh, was, you know, the lost tribes are scattered throughout Europe and they migrated eventually to the, to the Americas. And we 
are the new Israel. Because we all know that USA is the middle words in Jerusalem. Okay? So that just makes theological sense right there, you know. And so, and then there are other groups, some pretty, pretty um, dangerous groups like the, uh, that, that wasn't me, man. I didn't do it. Didn't touch the mic. Did, did anybody see me touch my tie? All right. Um, like uh, the uh, black Hebrew Israelites, um, la- was it last year? No, 2019, there was a shooting at a um, kosher grocery store up in Jersey City. Several folks, six people were killed, including a police officer. Uh, that was the black Hebrew Israelites. They're extremely anti-Semitic. And, uh, and so um, they believe they've replaced Israel, and they believe that the Jews... Um, are oppressing them in order to not allow them to fulfill their God, their destiny as the now chosen people. Uh, and so there's some, and then of course there's Rastafarianism, and uh, I love talking about that, but we don't have time. Anyway, so, um, anyway, I know. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it is, Sister Deborah. Um, what we see here is this promise that God, he, he says, you know, if he sins, I'm going to chase him. He, he never says I'm going to replace him. Nowhere do we see in the scriptures that God ever says, you guys mess up and you're toast and I'm going to replace you. It is never in there. God always preserves his people because there's a promise concerning an everlasting, right? Everlasting means, yeah, that's excellent. Please keep reading down. We've got to finish up. Um, if you were reading quicker, we'd be done. Go ahead. I'm just going to restart. <laughs> Go ahead, Dina. Right after everlasting. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, but I put away, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before How long? Forever. I love this shall be established forever. All right, we'll stop right there. The big deal about this idea of Bethlehem is because um, uh, Mary and Joseph were of the lineage of David and the fulfillment of the what's called the Davidic covenant. What what Dina just read is the Davidic covenant, that God made a covenant with David and with his seed to to, to establish a kingdom this lineage and a kingdom forever, not just, you know, until you guys mess up. So the Lord Jesus Christ is of that lineage. It's established uh, and, 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 if you would, validate it by his birth in David's hometown. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is now a fulfillment, not only of a prophecy concerning Bethlehem, but a, but a prophecy concerning this Davidic covenant, that he would be born of that line, and he is that seed that was promised to David to fulfill that great Davidic covenant. All right, we're going to end right there because there's a lot of folks in here that are in the choir, and uh, I know you need to run over your number before we get started today. So I'm officially done Sunday school early. Yes, amen. Lord bless you. Thanks for being here today. Uh, Vieter Zane, farewell.